live from New York. It's the show that is only one hour today. So we've got to take all of our energy, compact it down. So we've got to be extra special today. So yeah. You're in luck. Uh, it's first things first. Today, we <laughs> dive into the report that Aaron Rodgers may run an independent campaign for vice president of the United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in 30 minutes, we get a look at an early edition of Brew's official yes. NBA ballot. We've got all the awards, just in pencil, though. And finally, the committee held a special meeting last night for a special free agency edition of the best segment mm-hmm. in all of sports, Nick's Tears, alongside Chris Broussard. I'm Kevin Wilds. How's the committee doing? Well, I have, an, I have a special announcement. Friday, we're going to have on the show for the first time ever, true hand to God. Two committee members. Wow. Two committee members. Brew won't get to meet them because Brew is not here. Mm-hmm. So we're going to vote. We are wow. two committee members will be unveiled Think on about the show on Friday. Friday. Yeah, sure. Wow. <laughs> uh, but we're going to start with the big news of the day. Wow. Uh, it's news from the New York Jets football team. Their starting quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, is reportedly on the short list to be the running mate of independent candidate for president, Robert Kennedy Jr., also on the list, former Minnesota governor and BOA enthusiast, Jesse the Body <laughs> Ventura. According to the New York Times, both have, quote, welcomed the overtures. Jets PR did not weigh in when asked for a comment to The Athletic. Sauce Gardner, however, has, saying, oh, Aaron is about to become the vice president. That's why he hasn't been answering my text messages. Hmm. So that's from Sauce Gardner. Nick, do you have a comment? I do. Wilds, can you go back? I apologize yeah. to your script. The, the New York Times reported that both of them have the... Have, Welcome to the overture. So have not, have not dismissed oh, it, denied it, to, not yeah. said. It's not, it's not being reported that this is something RFK would like, but Aaron's like, you know, conflicts with my day job. Right. Um, okay. So now that we have that uh, settled, Aaron Rodgers should just retire. His heart's not in it. He has other interests. God bless him. Steph Curry, you know, I don't want to say floated, was asked yesterday, actually, Mm -hmm. would you ever run for office one day? And his answer was maybe. Like, so the idea, the the athlete, Bill Bradley Brew, who I think you covered in high school, um, was a senator for... (laughs) Jack Kim? Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of people, athletes, turned politicians. And Aaron Rodgers can... What you can't do is both. In a world where Baker Mayfield still gets criticized yeah. for a couple days of uh, insurance commercials during the offseason, I don't think you can weigh or balance quarterback for the Jets with, you know, the VP debate between weeks five and six. You don't think? I don't <laughs> think it's a realistic game plan. And I know that people are expecting me to call Aaron Rodgers disingenuous. Because he is the most disingenuous athlete of my lifetime. And for those people, you're in luck. Because here was Aaron Rodgers the last time he was in the Jets facility. What he said that needs to be the biggest focus of their offseason. Let's take a listen. When you step in the building, there's intentionality with everything that you do. And it's not a half the time thing. It's not a sometimes thing. It's not a most of the time thing. It's an every time thing. If you want to be a winning organization, and to put yourself in position to win championships and be competitive, everything that you do matters. And the bull that has nothing to do with winning needs to get out of the building. Unless, of course, I'm talking about myself. It, the ultimate do as I say, not as I do. And so I think that the New York Jets, this is tantamount to brew parents whose kid is a child star and the breadwinner of the family oh an 11 year old that's that's in a huge movie that they went from a working class (laughs) family to millionaires but it's all the kids money and he's figured it out he's like i'm in charge here they can't do anything to me because I'm pulling the purse strings. Well, Jaws an adult at least, but sure. What? But imagine well, yeah, a child, an actual child. Uh, uh, and when Robert Sala and Joe Douglas only have their jobs because Aaron likes them, mm. then he knows I can do this. I cannot <laughs> rebut it. I cannot deny it. In fact, I can consider, yeah, I mean, he's probably not going to win. And if he does, we'll cross that bridge when he gets there. So I think it's embarrassing. 
And I think that if this is what Aaron it's even embarrassing considers. Embarrassing for the Jets. Yes. And, and embarrassing for Aaron because he is trying to pretend, at least as of now, that these are two, that these are viable simultaneous paths. And they're not. Hmm. Yeah, that part is ridiculous, that these are both viable. So let me start here. In fairness to Aaron Rodgers, and I think he is obviously narcissistic. I think, you know, that's clear. But in fairness to him, when he did say, we got to be all in, all the other stuff that's not about winning, has to be out of the building, all that, he didn't know he was going to be asked to run for vice president. <laughs> all right? So I will give him that. And I'm going to be honest. He's 40 years old. He's clearly at the end of his road as far as playing football. I don't blame him, even though I don't think they would win, obviously. But I don't blame him for like, oh, wow. Now, if a Patrick Mahomes or Lamar Jackson, even in Aaron Rodgers early in his career, I don't think they I think they'd be like, no. I'm a football player, and I want to have my career. Mm -hmm. But now where Rodgers is at, I don't blame him for, like, being intrigued by this. I mean, sure. uh, that would be great. Uh, he seems like a guy that wants to talk about these things. He want, if he wants to run for VP, that's fine. And here's the thing. In two weeks, we're going to know. So but, we're gonna, they're going to make their decision. Robert, Ken Robert Kennedy Jr. is going to make his decision. And I'm betting it won't be Aaron Rodgers, right. but we'll know in a couple of weeks, so it doesn't have to be a huge distraction. Now, if it is Rodgers, he can't play football. I don't want to hear anybody, including him, talk about I can run for vice president and but play football. If I'm the Jets, I'm like, this is our opportunity to cut ties. And I get you right about the front office, Joe Douglas, Robert Sala. At some point, you just got to stand up like a man and say, this is not going to work. Uh, you cannot be running for vice president and play quarterback in well, the NFL. Obviously, but can I ask this question for you? So then wild. they cut ties. Yeah. The, and trade for Justin Fields. Brew. Oh, the, the, uh, I mean, bro, seriously, that, the, the, move the, off from him and his money. So, all right, so two things. One is... The CNN reported mm -hmm. that RFK has made his decision, just right. hasn't announced just it. Now, whether or not he's told to Aaron okay. or whatever it is, that's fine. Why, wh why would Aaron, if he is wants to play football, why would he not say thanks but no thanks? Or if he really wants to do this, why would he not say, yeah, we're, we're going to need to have this not leak? We're going to need to have the fact that I might be your pick. And if it does leak, Robert, I'm going to need you to go ahead and say it's not me if it's not me. Why would well, we allow we, this? The, what, what is happening of, in the NFL Because of what, right he, now? what he, he loves the attention. Okay, He's there we a go. narcissist. Okay. So I agree. He doesn't mind it leaking. Do you think it's good for the Jets right now? Forget no, two weeks. No, but, but it'll be over in a couple of weeks. It's free agency right now. That's right. It's, it, it's time to build your team they got a lot right there. now. Yes, but they right today. They traded for a, an old right tackle. You know why? Because they got an old quarterback. <laughs> mm -hmm. They needed. They, they, they're making their plans under the auspices that this guy is going to play quarterback for them. And now Aaron Rodgers, who is never hesitant to find a microphone, an interview, anything to get his point across. Now we're 24 hours removed from PFT commenters dog on Twitter breaking this story, by the way. Shout out to Leroy uh, for it being the first one on it, saying that Aaron Rodgers could be the uh, vice presidential candidate, and he's just letting it sit there. Well, how does that how right. does that not make you the biggest hypocrite in sports? How can I show one other quote while yeah, before yeah, go you ahead. go? Aaron Rodgers and Robert Sala when it came to hard knocks. Aaron Rodgers. A lot of eyes on me, a lot of eyes on our team, a lot of expectations on our squad. They forced it down our throats. Well, how about when the international foreign press starts coming to training camp, uh, Aaron? Sala, t several teams would love for a hard knocks to be in their building. We're just not one of them. Well, if your quarterback is flirting with a presidential run during an election year, I would say there's going to be more eyes on the team. But, so, but, Nick, again, it'll be over in a few weeks. It will not prove. If he, if the Jets are a joke. If they let this dude run for vice of president course. and be their quarterback. Of course that won't ah. happen. That's not what now, I'm saying. Now, what they but need to do is over. sit down and talk with him. Uh -huh. And if he really is going to be the VP, uh -huh. then that's where I, I – I was serious about the Justin Fields stuff. Sure. That's where it matters. Like, they should go after Justin Fields if, if he's not going to be there. But I will say this, and again, I don't think 
two months ago when Aaron Rodgers said we got to be all in that he was thinking he had a chance to run for vice president. And I think there's always I, I love it here. I love our job. There's some things that if it came my way that I might want to entertain. I'm sure it's the same for both of us, all three of us. Not me. So, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, I Locked think in. this is something. Now, I agree. He's disingenuous. He's narcissistic, all that. And this is hypocritical. But I think this is something that I don't blame him for entertaining. Okay. Sure. I buy that. Why, uh, I wish I had the same passion as you guys because I don't. It's crossed the Rubicon to... Yeah, man, whatever. I'm in prime, yeah, whatever, prob- probably not mode with Aaron Rodgers. It's like, I'm going to host Jeopardy. Like, yeah, pro- probably not, probably not going to be the host of Jeopardy. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, uh, be a Packer next year. Like, eh, prob- probably not. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm, 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 immu- I'm immunized. Like, you're probably not, dude. <laughs> you're, uh, you're probably not. I'm going to come back this year. Don't count me out. I'll be on that field. If we make a – you're probably not, dude. Uh, I, I was going to retire out of, the, out of the darkness retreat. Like, again, you're probably not. <laughs> so it's like he's, he's weighing being the vice presidential candidate. Like, it just hit me as probably not. So I tried to – you sent the text right after the show – and I had a pithy joke, and then I kind of moved on. And I think a lot of people are, which is, speaks to the fact that the, what's his next act of attention? That's what, that's what I'm interested in. Is, is oh, it this? After this? After this goes yeah, away, this is be just like everything else has gone away, it peaks up and then it goes away. Does he have another card to play? I, I don't know if he does. The, 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 Attention for the warmth of the spotlight and it is hard and also after to this, quench. Where do you go? And, 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 I agree with that, and but I want to, if I may, and I think that was it was brilliantly done, Wilds. And you're right, which is your old buddy Bill Simmons called it 20 years ago the Tyson zone. Yeah, when someone entered, he said Mike Tyson entered a place where someone could tell you anything. Did you see that Mike Tyson did X and you would believe it? Yeah. Selling would, gummies it, it, of Evander Holyfield's <laughs> ear? It's like, wait, what? Yeah, yeah. and so Fighting at Right, right. right. Fighting Ty- Jake Paul right. and Mike Tyson, Logan. evidently, God bless him, still in the Tyson zone. <laughs> Rogers has entered that. Yeah. Where there is nothing I could text you about Aaron other than, you know, he was seen on a field doing the 40 that you wouldn't believe. <laughs> and so th- th- there's that part of it. Bro, I want to get back to something you said, which is you said that we all have jobs. That if, So I agree with you, but I'm also going to tell you this. If you were like, guys, I'm letting you know I might be leaving the show. I think I, I got a chance. They saw some of the grainy high school footage. I think I might be the next quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens. I'd be like, you don't take this job seriously, buddy, because you actually have no chance of that. I know it sounds like a great job, but you're not going to get that job. Aaron Rodgers has no chance of being the next vice president of the United States. No, None. but does he have None. a chance of being Kennedy's yeah, candidate? Yeah, yeah, he has That's a chance. That's all we're saying. Yeah, no, that. But that, Kennedy's not going to win the presidency. I under, which is but why it's running. so insulting. Right. But he's not leaving 52 guys on his team hanging. I don't know what Robert Kennedy's, he, he's, he's putting the lady from Curb Your Enthusiasm in a tough spot. Aside from that, he's just his We've own guy. We've had some presidents I, I understand, that bro. we didn't think would no, ever be president. I, I agree with you, but you also. It's become crazy But, but you also in this agree country. that he's, he's consider, he is, he is framing, framing it as for a job he knows he wouldn't get. And that's the part of me. And I don't even think he's going to be think named he the knows vice president. That? Yeah. I think it is what you. I think it is the narcissistic attention complex of, and the idea that when he doesn't get it, or when Kennedy doesn't pick him, or whatever, that okay, it's in two weeks, so it goes away. You don't think that this is a topic of conversation when the Jets meet the media for the first time. You don't think Bob Sala's got to deal with this, Joe Douglas, and you don't think it then leads to this round of conversations. So tell us, Aaron. 
What do you like about Robert Kennedy's platform? Is that about football? Well, is well, that about is that well, any of those things? I agree with you on that, and and you could easily squash that quickly. Like, it, let's say yes. he doesn't get the nominate or you know the candidacy, mm. and it's back to football. Mm-hmm. And like you said, all these questions are asked. If you just did it right away, you know what? Look, guys. Yeah, I thought about wanting to be a VP. I mean, you know, but. I, it didn't happen, and now I'm zoned in on the jet. You know, it's a day of maybe uncomfortable I questions, okay, I, and then I, you move on. I, if he if he would do that, but he'll probably entertain oh, it yeah. and talk about it weekly with McAfee or whatever, and that would be a problem. But if you could dead it easily if he would do it. They're so far away from being a Super Bowl contender. Super Bowl? I mean, that, far, that's what he's there to do. They're barely oh, in point. the NFL. Well, that's a good point, Wild. But you're right. Saying, we have moved. We you're like it's gonna. We're oh, gonna. He's trophy. gonna dead it. Yeah, he wanted trophy, the trophy. The trophy. The, I wrote down, and I know, I know you reference Baker's <laughs> oh, uh, right about Baker's that. commercial. Kyler plays video games. Duty. You're right. And it's like, man, he's not locked in. Now that might be a bigger time <laughs> commitment than RFK's. <laughs> <video>. Trevor Lawrence <laughs> told Sports Illustrated three years ago. There's also more to life than playing football. Russell Wilson, God forbid, had an office. He had an <laughs> office and a phone and be like, what's going on here? This guy's not yeah, locked and in. Wild, do you want to We're know so far away. Don't say it's well, take a shot at my office. No, I'm not. I'm not Russell gonna, Wilson's I, office. No, I was gonna I was gonna tee you up. You know what all three of those guys have in common? What? Too? They've all thrown for 300 yards more recently. Tell me about it. Rogers. That's true. All six games. Three three needs. That should be his campaign. Oh, I promise. Gosh. I will throw for 300 yards. <laughs> Afternoon headlines. Uh, check in on the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes, meanwhile, is restructuring his contract to open up about $21.5 million in cap space. Just Chiefs already signed. He's his campaign chest. Okay. Chris, <laughs> Chris Jones. We're waiting news on Legere's Sneed. I don't know what's mm. going on there. Uh, mm. Can see. Still relatively quiet on the free agency front. Yeah. Uh, Is their quietness a chief concern? Peel back the curtain. Hubs really wants to make this chief concern bit. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. Uh, thing. (laughs) Free agency thus far for the Chiefs literally could not have gone better. Uh, There's not one contract. And I went through today. My buddy Florio has his list of the top 103. I don't know why it's 103. I, like I think it. it was 100, but then he added a few guys because they got cut. Top, top 103 off. free agents. Okay. Of the, not, not all of them have signed, obviously. There was not a single one of those free agent deals of a team, like a guy went to a new team that I saw. I'm like, ah, wish the Chiefs would have done that. Not one. Yeah, they have, they have to have a wide receiver. Well, what are the tiers of wide receiver that have signed? Michael Pittman for $70 million over three mm-hmm. years. No, thank you. Gabe da- next year, Gabe Davis, thirty-nine million over three years. No, thank Gabe's you. I know you good. love him. Or the lowest, <laughs> Devonte Parker, Dusty. five million for one year. Dusty. No thanks. And so what now? Mike Williams just got cut. Yeah. Okay. Tyler Boyd is out there. Hollywood Brown is out there. Calvin Ridley's out there. Do I think one of those guys might sign either a one-year prove-it deal or a ring-chasing type of deal? Sure, maybe. But I also know that. Uh, we've got pro football Focus Bruce guys have 15 wide receivers ranked higher than Xavier Worthy, who just ran a 4-2-1. They've got, and so they're going to be able to get one in the draft. Mm-hmm. And because of this, if they want to keep Snead, they can. They can keep Snead on the franchise tag for a year if they want to. So, no, I am, there has not been a single player sign that I'm like, damn, Chiefs missed out on that. So, for me, I'm fine with it. No, look, I agree. I mean, and after what happened last season – you can't – nothing's going to happen that's going to really make you doubt the Chiefs. The Chiefs look bad for the second half of the season. Yeah, mm-hmm. Not they, they, me. I mean, they were, what, five, six and five over Before their last 11? the Super Bowl win in that? No, I'm, last, I'm talking about oh. – my point is the regular season, yeah. they look bad. Yeah, but the defense always All right, looked good. The defense – and the defense is only going to get better because, as you've talked about, they're young. All right, they kept Chris Jones, especially if they keep Snead. So the defense is going to get better. Offensively, I would like to see him go get a receiver. I know they'll probably yeah. draft a guy, and it is a deep draft. Mike Williams, man, look, maybe I like Mike Williams more than others. But when the dude is healthy, well, that, but he that, is great. The now, I know he hasn't been able to stay a tough healthy, one. but he is really good. So he would be great with the Chiefs if they got him, and you probably get him at a good price. Uh, and then you draft somebody. So, no, there's no – again, if they got it done last year, 
then you can't say they're not going to be able to get it done any year that Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid are there. I agree. And listen, I think I do think they're going to sign. They're going to spend decent money either on a wide receiver or a tackle, and whichever one they don't is what their first round pick will be. So like Tyron Smith is still out there, uh, but they Donovan Smith, their own left tackle is not re-signed yet. So I think they, I don't think they're going to stay totally out of it entirely. They obviously added Irv Smith Jr. I don't know why everyone's overlooking that. Great tight end too. They added there. But the other thing that should, should be noted is they've drafted the last few years. So many guys that are big time contributors. They also have to keep the money to right. pay them. Creed Humphrey and Trey Smith, their center and right guard, might need extensions this offseason. Next offseason, McDuffie, Karloftis, and Pacheco, who we all love. You know what I mean? Those get all so when yeah. you know you gotta re-sign your own guys, you gotta you gotta and find And you know a way. you can win it with what you have, because yeah. because Rasheed and those guys are gonna get better. Oh yeah. I still like Hollywood Brown. Yeah, maybe like a one year prove it yeah, type of deal. Ring chasing I, deal. I like that. Uh, tears, special episode next. It's Wednesday at 325 on the dot, and in the midst of free agency, which means you're in for the treat last night, a special Skype session. Wow, Skype. Some in person. Okay. Uh, the committee met, fought, toiled, and burned the midnight oil to deliver the best segment in all of sports television. It's an honor and a privilege. It's time for a special edition, free agency edition of Nick's Tears. Wow. It is, and as mentioned earlier, but I'll say it again, mm. two of our nine committee members will be on this show on Friday. They're Tune staying in. over. Brew is gone. They said they would only come on if Brew wasn't here because he's disrespected the committee <laughs> so much. So it worked out they quite well. Secret or like the Greg, mafia style? No, they're going to work. Yeah. They will be unmasked on the show. All right, bottom of the tiers, all 32 teams already planning for 2025. Uh, the Jets got added to it because they're planning for a campaign in 2020, a cabinet appointment, a lot of things they got to do. Those four teams are like, okay, if we can stabilize, figure out the quarterback situation this year, then maybe next year we can actually make Not some unfair. moves. Right? Praying to the quarterback gods. All So Denver and Minnesota are like, please let this be a Big Ben situation. Where the third or fourth quarterback off the board that's available in the teens ends up being awesome because that's their bo- both drafting after 10. The Giants are praying, please let Greg Jennings have a victory lap next year on Daniel Jones. <laughs> and, the, and the Titans are hoping that if they, you know, they don't have to pray quite as hard because Love has showed some signs, but still he's second round pick. You gotta have some things break your way. Uh, speaking of things breaking your way, everything has to fall perfectly. So all three of these teams, you can make a case, are going to be playoff teams next year. But everything has to fall perfectly. The Cardinals have to crush the draft. Kyler's got to be healthy and play the way we've seen him play. The Saints need all of their 30-something-year-old guys to play at least a dozen to 16 games. It's going to be very hard. And Derek Carr to bounce back. And the Seahawks need rookie head coach and Geno to be on the same page and Geno to have a season more similar to two years ago than last year. It can happen, but everything's got to fall perfectly. Omar Little, arguably the greatest character. I think that's the next group. If it's not, go ahead and reveal the next group. I'm sorry. Intriguing with the ceiling. Omar's after that. My apologies, guys. Intriguing with the ceiling. All of these teams believe they're going to be playoff teams. All of them are intriguing. Anthony Richardson coming back from injury is maybe the biggest unknown. What you're going to see Matt Ryan look like with the Falcons. All, all of Matt Ryan. Matt Jeez, Ryan Louise, I can't Falcons get over it. Kind of I kind of know. <laughs> Kirk Cousins with the Falcons. But none of those teams as presently constituted can win the Super Bowl. All of them will be disappointed if they don't make, make the playoffs. Now, I was obviously a little over eager for the Omar Little t- tier. Fans of The Wire know what's Omar Little's greatest line? Come at the king, you best not miss. All five of these teams took their shot at Kansas City. All five missed, and now we are peeling it back a bit. We're taking a few steps back because we took our shot, and now we weren't good enough last year or the year before, and now we're going to be a little worse than we were last year or the year before because we are losing players, whether it's Roquan Smith, your entire secondary, se- secondary Mike Williams, the the your best offensive tackle in Christian Wilkins signed for $100 million, and, or Patrick Queen for Baltimore, pardon me, and 
Mike Williams leaves the Chargers. You, Christian Wilkins leaves the Dolphins. And the Eagles figuring out what they're going to do. But don't worry. I'm sure Saquon Barkley will <coughs> fix it. Next. Preparing for or a lot to love, a lot of upside. The Packers and the Bears. So I know people are going to think this is a little too bullish on the Bears. But the Bears were a seven-win team last year with an awful quarterback situation. And they are getting a generational quarterback in the building, plus all the free agency money, plus another top 10 pick. Everybody loves the Packers. They're both in the weaker conference. They both have, there's a lot to love and a lot of upside. Now, praying for an AI invite. What's AI? Any guesses? Any guesses? Wilds? I mean, I'll fall into it. Yeah. Artificial intelligence. Nope. Arrowhead invitation. Exactly. They are I'm just hoping. They are it. just hoping. <laughs> can, check in the mail. Are we going to get to be there? We just hope we get to be the runners up in the AFC. <laughs> That's our ceiling, and we know it, but we would be delighted to be there. Still, really, really good. Listen, I understand why there's skepticism. But these are both good teams that have had minimal offseason losses. The Niners' biggest loss, Eric Arms said, that's a real one. But they have since added uh, Leonard Floyd and Malik Collins, and it seems like uh, Mike Silver saying they might add more. Dallas hasn't lost much, hasn't added much. They're both double-digit win teams that we know we question them in the playoffs. For Dallas, it's because of their coach and quarterback. For the Niners, it's because of their coach and quarterback, I guess. But they're really good teams. And now to near the top of the tiers, forever enshrined. So what do I mean by that? Think about those two guys that mobbed Hank Aaron after 715. Or the Soviet hockey team. Or Brian Russell. You can see them all, right? Because they're on someone else's legendary highlight reel. Okay. And one of these two teams is likely to be on the field when the Chiefs win their third straight Super Bowl. Wow. And they will be forever enshrined to history as, wow, they were there. Now, that also means I think these are the two best teams in the NFC as presently constituted. and. No surprise. Reveal the top of the tiers, please. Rewriting the GOAT record books. Whether it's team, coach, quarterback, they're trying to rewrite it all. That is the committee's off-season tiers. Greg Jennings. Uh, well, I like the top of the tiers. Obviously, okay. oh, the Chiefs. Yeah, thanks. There's a lot that I could go on and go on about. What? But let's focus on the Raiders. And I, I'm not going to even acknowledge this, the names because we weren't given the names. But the Raiders? The Raiders at the bottom? At there? the bottom? Like, this was an 8 and 9 team, a team that finished 4 and 2 in that division. And we're making it seem like they, they're just going to lie down for everybody. They just got better in free agency on, on both sides of the ball with Wilkins and Gardner Minshew. Whether we want to believe it or not, Gardner Minshew is a better quarterback than Jimmy Garoppolo and. And their current Aiden guy right. under center right now, Aiden O'Connell. Like, I like – look look at where you have the Colts. Like, the Colts are there in, in, in large in part because of what we saw them do last year with Gardner Minshew under center. Ooh, almost, take. almost making the postseason. I like that take. This team was better than the Broncos last year. The Broncos fought. They have nothing. And you have them at the bottom. Yeah. Like, I just – I can't – I'm I like not at all a Raiders fan. But boy, you are completely <clears throat> disrespecting the Raiders. I like that. Yeah. Uh, the bulletin board's very skeptical. Oh, they've been oh too much that's trash. what it is. Mahomes rules. Well, yeah, that's, guys, keep your, keep your eye on the board. Why don't you try to not be, you know, an embarrassing franchise for the last mm. decade rather than worried about Patrick okay. Mahomes? And also, $25 million that's, for Gardner Minshew. Come on. Your plan going into the year is Gardner Minshew? That's Gardner your Minshew plan? Can play. No, 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 he can't. He, he's he's so, a good backup. He is their planned starter. Is he but, is he better than what they have currently had? I thought Aiden O'Connell played decent last year. He's, he's better than the fact that you the fact I mean, that you didn't answer Jimmy that question. I'll yeah. let the Jimmy G slide. Ahead, slide. Oh my god! All right, I'm a the Ravens, Nick. I mean, if you had done this yesterday, before they got Derrick Henry, maybe I'd have let this slide. But with Derrick Henry, they're way down there below the freaking Bears. Uh, Caleb. I mean, uh, no, no. And their defense, I, I said it, I, I hate, you know, some of the losses. But they got a culture of great defense. That's what True. they do. They've been in the top three five of the last six years in scoring defense. They've been in the top ten seven of the last eight years in defense. That's culture. Guys that weren't great defenders elsewhere go there and ball out defensively. So the defense is going to be fine. Offensively, now I got Derrick Henry. 
with all due respect to Gus Edwards and, and J.K. Dobbins and these guys, they ran well behind that offensive line with teams paying attention to Lamar first. What do you think the big man's going to do? And he can still break them too? Oh, my gosh. And they're going to get a receiver in the draft? They oh, my gosh. every year, don't they? I don't know if any team spent more draft capital. High, they, ends of ones, yeah, the ends Ravens. Of one. How many? I, the, Ravens should be right. up. And they've matured. They've what? learned from their mistakes oh, in the they? AFC Championship. Really? Yeah. They will not be doing that foolishness that cost them against I, the Chiefs. You know what? I agree with you. They will not be doing much in the AFC Championship game this coming year. I, Wild, I have a confession before you go. Go ahead. There was a lot of pushback from the committee about where I had the Ravens. They wanted them up a little bit higher. They wanted them alongside the Bengals and the Texans. Yeah. In the, you know, for the trying yeah. to get an invite to Arrowhead Invitational. I was like, guys, if we put the Ravens on the Omar Little tier, we can justify it and we can bait Brew into further <laughs> trying to rekindle his love. It's like anonymously sending him a I picture know. of a high school girlfriend. Like, hey, no, nobody knows. Just I'm like reminiscing. Thing. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm <laughs> reminiscing. <laughs> oh, and a <laughs> Baltimore good times thing. Together. Yeah. Good point. Wild it ended badly, but yeah. we had yeah. some good times <laughs> yeah. together. We're right. gonna, you know, rekindle uh, that all right, flame. so I also have a confession to make. I thought the Bengals were too low because I didn't get to, we don't get to see the title Mm-hmm. And now you have them in the AFC Championship game. So I'm like, well, that's actually yeah. pretty good. But without seeing the <laughs> title, the you knew AFC, they were. Yeah, right. they were. I know, but you have them down on the fifth fifth spot or sixth spot. You know, it doesn't go left to right. Maybe yeah. six or seven. But in, in a, and anyway, I made a Bengals. Uh, <laughs> I believe in the Bengals. First of all, Joe Burrow underrated at this point, Greg. Maybe what? when he was when he's healthy, underrated. Maybe. Just saying, I'm putting out maybe there. He's a very good quarterback. Feels like you were the guy one saying that he might be a system quarterback. Once I never said he's a system quarterback. I never you said did. You, you flirted, flirted with, with that. Jake yeah. Browning can play a little bit. There you go. <laughs> I'm just you saying, go. Jake got- Browning or Gardner Minshew, who you got? Probably Gardner, <laughs> just because I like the outfits a little bit more. Uh, but what about the defense you're saying? Uh, Kevin, the defense was actually really bad. They gave up a ton of big plays. Uh, here's the graphic about the big plays, how bad they are. Uh, turns out they're the worst. Ooh. Seahawks, Commanders, wow. and the Lions. That's a lot of big plays. Good news. Wow. Free agency, when got Geno. And a little bit of addition by subtraction, Gino take him away good. from the Ravens. And this is the, this is the type of scouting the Patriots used to do. Oh, did you ever have a big play against us? You did. He intercepted Joe Burrow. <laughs> ended up to it being a Bengals loss. Do we have the video? Nope. That's Oh, there it is a little, yeah. a little bit late. It's just an interception. I told you guys about it. There he goes. He runs back. And finally, this is a Josh special. Yeah. Because no one else really likes to do this except me. A little strength of schedule action? Is it oh. too early? Oh, no. Yeah, maybe. Non-divisional opponents. Some TCs on there, bro. A yeah. handful. We don't know how the year is going to go, but it's it's there are yeah, some TCs are. there. Uh, last two years, NFL best 17-4 in non-division games. If you got some TCs on your schedule, all of a sudden, maybe. Well, they do get the benefit of the the last place schedule, even though they're not a last place quality of team. You know what I mean? That's rare that that happens. That happens usually if your division stacked, which theirs was, or if your quarterback gets hurt, which theirs did. That's yeah. how you can have that. So listen, that's why they're fighting with the Texans. Yeah, it's fair to be, you know, runners up in the AFC. It's a good spot for them. Yeah. I just it's thought they were spot. too I, low. And, and by the spot. way, they still have T. Higgins. Maybe Brew's right that they're going to hold their water. On T. Higgins. Brew made a compelling Jonah Williams case yesterday. I was shocked he had that right off the top of his dome. That was good. <laughs> that was really good. That crush. I was a big Jonah. That was really good. <laughs> I was like, when's the last time? I was like, bam! Uh, welcome back to Predictions Week. Today, we are getting an early preview of Brew's ballot. Uh, Chris Broussard, of course, is an official voter of the league's awards. Has been for years. But this is just in pencil. Yes. Unlike our predictions, which we are staked to, even though earlier today... <laughs> Brew tried to move off of his Clippers pick in the morning meeting. Brew, take it away. I do have an adjustment later on. All right, here, these are the awards, and again, it's in pencil. There's a little time left, so maybe some of this will change. Rookie of the year, Wimby, he's going to be the face of the league. And I'm going to say this, and I don't even, this shouldn't even be a surprise. I'm not saying this is going to happen for Mm -hmm. sure. I'm not saying it's definite. Ceiling, go. Wow. That's the ceiling. He might not reach his ceiling, but that's the ceiling. And floor is a king. Probably. <laughs> Probably. His floor? I mean, unless he gets his if he's floor? healthy. If he's healthy, yeah, the dude is crazy. His Let me see that no, again. I mean, it's pretty good. All right, so Wimby is a rookie. Malik Monk, I'm sure yeah. you like this. Yes. You know what I liked about Monk is that you got a lot of scores off the bench. 
He's efficient. Yeah. There are a few more that are efficient, but a lot of guys around 40% shooting, 41. He's at 45 and 37 from yeah. three. And he's a playmaker. Gives yeah. you five and a half assists the game. I like Monk. Very few guys are doing that. He's playing really well. Defensive player of the year, I know Nick's not going to like this. Go Bear. Yeah. He's going to tie Ben Wallace and Dikembe Mutombo. He is the anchor of the best defensive team in the league. And it's best by a lot. Yeah, and he's individually he's got the best defensive like rating that. in the league. Yeah. Uh, Mark Dagna, come on. Top seed in the West, tied with Denver. They may end up at number two, but right now he's tied for number one with a team that's oldest starters 25 years old. Huh. Yeah. Think about that. Uh, I no. mean, that's crazy. So this dude can coach. So, so if I may, just so this is, uh, as, as you know, you guys know, I don't have a vote. I don't have a ballot. At this point, it seems I never will. That's fine. I've come to terms <laughs> with it. If I did, this would be mine at the moment as well. I agree with you. You don't need one, really. Exactly. Like you, there you, you go. Um, I but I deserve. would like to focus just for a moment on Rookie of the Year because Wilds before the year was big on Chet, and Chet probably would finish second. So that was a good it was a good take. Like Wimby's been better than I think even Brew expected this season. And so look, I am not hesitant to bring up my category one instantly correct takes or my category two eventually correct takes. My Scoot Rookie of the Year take <laughs> might be the rare Cat 3 Brew. So we're going to throw it on there. Uh, hasn't gone great for... The third pick of the draft, not a little, you know, more than a little disappointing yeah. for Scoot Henderson. And so, I just, you know, I'm just being fair and being honest. You were at least up to one year in. I'm not saying Scoot yeah, ceiling well, so isn't the you, goat. Well, I'm not saying I'm not. No, okay. I'm not saying that. I'm just <laughs> saying that through one year, Brew appears to be winning that argument. Fair. So credit to you, my friend. Thank you. I appreciate no that, Nick. Yeah. I, I'm something, you know. No, there's nothing coming. 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 There's <laughs> something coming from out behind there, some break dancers, no. some banners. No. All right, here, MVP. Yeah. And this is where we'll have some fun. Jokic, it's not just, yes, he, I think he's the best player in the world, but we know the best player doesn't win it every year. But, I, Nick, he's the best offensive player in the league, I think. Yeah. I mean, scoring, he does it all. There's nothing he can't do offensively. And then defensively, I mean, he's not the greatest defender, but he leads the league in defensive plus minus. You know, he, he's up there in defensive rating. Like, he's not a weak link he's defensively because he's so big and he's smart. So they can get those nah. fake reviews. <laughs> <laughs> here's, the, here's the other thing, Nick. He is, of, of the Western Conference's top eight teams, and you could even include the Lakers at nine, Golden State, not really – they all – there's two of them that don't have a second all, – don't have multiple all-stars that are pretty much still playing well. The, he's one of them. So this guy has the best record in the West, running through the West, and with no all-star teammate. SGA, the second team. Sure. The, they're the other team that doesn't have another all-star. And I talked about how young they are. This guy's leading the league in steals, second in scoring. I got to give him his props. Like, yeah. he's just – and he's got a bunch of young kids that he's carrying. He's young himself. Tatum, look, we, we – last week was a rough week for him. Totally fair. Wasn't clutch. But, look, I can't say Giannis is clutch as far as, like, mentality Giannis might be clutch. Giannis has better than Tatum. But, but he's not a go – no, Tatum, they got the best record in the league by a mile. Yep. Six games over the best team in the West. Nine and a half games over Milwaukee in the East. He leads them in scoring, in rebounding. Is right there tied with Derek White, essentially, for assist lead. I got to give him his props. And they got the fifth best margin of victory ever. Correct. Yeah. So then I got Giannis at number four. He's playing well. I do think they've been disappointing, Nick, though. For them, he's got a great second guy in Damon. I get it, there's an adjustment. But they've been a little bit disappointing. Still got a shot. And then Luca, I mean, Luca's just a triple double machine, even though they're not playing great as a team necessarily. So, I got to give him this look. Great job. So if Joker wins his third MVP, this is the company he would be with. Everybody has three or more. The bottom row Magic, Larry, uh, Moses, wow. and then Joker if he got three. So how do you think this would affect his legacy, Nick? Well, yeah, I mean, to me, the top, I disagree with Brew and SGA and Tatum. I'd have Jokic and then Giannis, and I'd have it closer than Brew seems to have it. Because Giannis, would, you could put his head there yep. where Jokic is. is. But th that's right. That's what, Listen, that's the, the, the company of which he is trying to keep. The only person on that list 
that right now he already is within reaching distance of in the all-time rankings is Moses. Right. Uh, and, and I think he'll get Moses. The, it, uh, no, I think he's likely to it, to uh, surpass Moses in most people's all-time rankings. I think we don't have to get into it. Wilds gets annoyed when Bruin no. and I do 80s basketball reminiscing. <laughs> but uh, I think Moses is one of the most underrated players ever. I think I he's agree. one of the 15 greatest players ever. But that's the area Jokic is trying to encroach upon. I don't think that winning this MVP brew and the championship this year for Jokic or Giannis would move them ahead of anyone else on that no. list. Moses, okay. though. For, it, it would. But, for but, a championship and MVP for yeah. either of those two guys would move ahead of Moses, but not Bird or Magic or Will. Or okay. Quickly, uh, title time. Celtics officially oh. the favorite in Boston dispatch to the Jazz last night for their 51st win of the year. They also, as Brew mentioned, have an 11-point margin of victory, good for fifth of all time, with the caveat that the teams ahead of them all won the title. So, Brew, does this sway you to thinking the Celtics are going to bring home the Larry O'Brien trophy? It's an interesting thing. I mean, there, you can't deny that history, but I – look, I, I will say this. I talked to Hubs about this. He said it was okay. He said stuff is written in – the cement is wet still. So, I still got Boston winning the East. I know. I got – this is still predictions week. Yeah. I got Boston winning the East. But instead of beating Miami, they're going to beat uh, Milwaukee in the conference finals. What? So it's Boston over Milwaukee. And so talk you to Hubs. You got an issue that? Right, talk Who to do you have in the finals? <laughs> right, so, no, I got Boston okay. beating Milwaukee in, okay. the, in the Eastern Conference. Okay. So that yeah. hasn't changed. But we, I got Denver beating Boston. Okay. I think Jokic is just too good. And Jamal Murray. Yeah, who you keep saying Jokic gets MVP because he hasn't been an all-star. And now you're going to tell me how great Jamal it, Murray is. He's interesting because you know what? This is, and you, there are a few guys here. I think Calvin mm-hmm. Murphy maybe made one all-star team. He's a Hall of Famer. He right now is like on a Hall of Fame trajectory, and he's never made an all-star. Well, then maybe That's we should. So look, look at this. I, I, he's averaging in numbers. Got, in the regular season, 17 to, points. Minute, he's okay. at 25 in the playoffs. Yeah, okay, yeah. The dude is bad is, yeah, in agree, the which is, But you can't be like the Nuggets have nobody but well, Jokic, he's so never, he's winning MVP. It's a fact MVP. that he's never right. made an all-star. But now he's a Hall of Famer. And he's All right. not Dane. All right, Dane's so I don't 75. have to change anything that I did yesterday or the day before. Because Bruce also, by the way, going to abandon the Clippers being in the Clippers. No, no, no. I mean, if they get hurt, it's in the finals. I wrote the box. Brew, the only person that's going to believe in the Bucks, the fear of the deer. That Wilds, Wilds used to love the Bucks. He brought out a reindeer. The guy dropped his antlers on him. Twice bit one been shot. The same Bucks same over sense. Nuggets in the for the finals. Ooh, really? Roland's beating Denver in a seven-game series. We know how it's going to go. Denver in six, maybe even five. Wow. Over the Celtics. Celtics. I like six. I like five. To be if honest, it happens in five. The Celtics will make a major change. You think? If the Celtics, even if they make it's the finals, if they get wa- worked, then they'll make a significant Also, if Denver has to play yeah. the Lakers, that you know, post sweep, it's that long. Okay. <laughs> you go into Boston. Close in game sweep, one. though. Nick, close no, sweep. I, yeah, that's not a thing, guys. Four games by total. <laughs> Metal time. End of the game. Bucks in Sacramento, they're getting blown out. But Andre Jackson making the most out of the little playing time that Doc Rivers will give him with one of the best dunks of the year. Uh, Bucks lose by 35. Also, thank you for putting this highlight in there. It reminds me I need to buy tickets for my grandmother to Kings Lakers, which tips off in six hours. Oh, I need to get on that. Bronze medal, <laughs> Josh Hart, 2019 and 10. He said he wanted to get his 20th rebound, but Thomas wouldn't let him. Thomas being Tom Thibodeau. The Knicks seem to have a really good relationship amongst each other and with their coach. Silver medal. Jason Tatum, 38 and 6. The blowout went over the Jazz, including a Derrick Henry S stiff arm. And then a gold medal. He might be on a silly team, but ever since Carl Anthony Towns went down, he has upped his game as he needs to. Anthony Edwards, 37, 8, and 4. And a nice comeback and a blowout win over the Clippers in the game. Kawhi left early, scarily. There yeah. is the podium from last night in the association. Okay, 90 seconds left. Raiders expecting to release Jimmy G. Uh, as you know, bro, he won 70% of his games. Yeah. But has only started 16 in the last two years. Uh, six last year for Vegas, where he threw seven touchdowns and nine interceptions. I haven't done the uh, numbers, but some of those certainly weren't his fault. Oh, yeah. A lot of them. <laughs> no doubt. Where do you want to see Jimmy G land? <sighs> it's tough. I mean, his body's betrayed him. He's not the same as he used to be. But I, Nick, Denver? Why not? Because... 
You think Sean Payton, after dealing with Russell Wilson, why would he sign up for that? I mean, especially what, what, if his body is. What else him, are bro. they going to do? The, draft a quarterback, like I think they plan to, like they they hope to. And then Jimmy G the, can be there. Jer- J- Jimmy, Stidham, I don't know that Jimmy G is better than Jared Stidham. Well, I don't. Jimmy G last year was, did not the, lose his the job. Super Bowl, through yeah, two go. NFC through. title games. Yeah. He did not lose his job be last year because graphic. of injury. He lost his job last year because of incompetence to Aiden O'Connell. Oh. Would you – is Aiden – No, I mean, look, he's taking a lot of hits. He oh, never was the I healthiest can't. guy. I mean, his body betrayed, betrayed him when he was in his prime. Yeah. He only had two years. That's it for us. And he we'll made the NFC title game both of them.